When it comes to cable ties, there's a lot of things to consider. First off, there's a variety of cable ties like you see before you. These were all pulled off of various projects over the past two, three years. You can see they're not all uniform. What gets used on a project, often the installer determines that. Often the specifications only address the color that it needs to be a differentiating color from the background of the geonet for ease of inspection, and the spacing. Often there's a more frequent spacing in high stress areas such as on a slope or in an anchor trench. But other than that, there's no real specification that governs cable ties. So as a CQA person, how am I supposed to enforce that the right cable tie is being used? And as an engineer or owner, how do you know that the cable ties being used are sufficient for your project? For instance, in this arrangement here, we have some cable ties that say indoor use. Are these sufficient for your project? I'm going to do an informal test and try and talk to you as I go through this test. I'm going to run two tests. One I'm just going to run on a single, single cable tie to see what the tensile strength pulls. Okay, that won't go in, of course. And then the second one I'm going to put together like you would in the field. So it's going to be inserted the same way to kind of represent the joining of a loop of a cable tie back on itself. Um, it's just one way I thought I could possibly simulate testing. This is an informal test, obviously, but I'm just curious to see what happens. The Army Corps of Engineers, I understand, has a test that uses an anvil and you wrap the cable tie and join it and it'll expand it like this but obviously I don't have that capability and I don't ever see it specified in the field so I'm trying to figure out what can we do in the field to figure out if these are going to work. As you can see the head is already slipping off of this one and it was joined properly so it simulates that when it's under pressure it's going to, the head is going to fail, the clasp is going to fail and the test is done so I will stop it. On this lower value, the 46, that's the pounds of the straight pull on the tensile of the unclasped tie. The upper one peaked at 33 before the head failed to hold the rest of the cable tie as it was under stress. Now, I used a bag that actually had a rating. It's the indoor bag, but it does have a cable tie tensile strength rating on the bag of 50 pounds. And you can see it's pretty close on the straight pull, but when it's clasped together, it's not reaching that 50 pounds. So the test performed here today, obviously, was just on one cable tie from one batch. But we've tested these different batches. We've tested some other ones just out of curiosity. And these results of this test were pretty similar to what we're seeing across the board for 7-inch cable ties. One of my main reasons for concern in this issue is on steep slopes where we've seen cable ties have actually failed, is that a problem? Is it enough of a problem to possibly cause damage or injury to someone if there's equipment working on this slope and the cable ties release. Perhaps maybe we need to, as an industry, take a harder look at is there a need for additional testing? Is there a need for repeatable test? And what can we do moving forward to get that uniformity that gives us some power and comfort 